All right, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody got a good night's sleep. You're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Welcome to Math Lesson 8, the relationship between addition and subtraction. So starting off with some terms that we have to go over. Remember, when it comes time for the Socrative quiz, your assignment, if you don't remember, you can always go back in your book and look these up. First one is difference. And a difference is the answer when you subtract. Another set of terms we want to talk about are called inverse operations. And inverse operations are opposite types of math that can undo each other. If you have 2 plus 3 equals 5, if you do it in the opposite direction, 5 minus 3 would equal 2. These are two inverse operations because addition and subtraction are inverse operations. And multiplication and division are also inverse operations. If I had 2 times 3 equals 6, I could go in reverse with the opposite sign. 6 divided by 3 is going to equal 2. So we also want to talk about fact families. And fact families are numbers that can be used to write four sets of inverse operations. You might see problems like this for quite a while now where it says write two addition and two subtraction facts for the fact family 2, 7, and 9. So let's take a look and see how that's going to work for us. So let's start off with some addition facts. If they want us to use 2 and 7 and 9, I could start off with the first one. 2 plus 7 equals 9. 2 and 7 are the add-ins. 9 is the sum, right? So let's just go ahead and reverse the add-ins for the second addition fact. Instead of saying 2 plus 7 equals 9, let's try 7 plus 2 equals 9. There's your two addition facts. Now let's go ahead and reverse the order on our subtraction facts. So I could go 9 minus 7 equals 2. Let's take a look at the last one and we'll reverse the order here again. 9 minus 2 equals 7. So there are our four sets of inverse operations using these three digits in this particular fact family. Let's try it again. It's going to say write two addition and two subtraction facts for the fact family 7, 8, and 15. Let's go ahead and do the addition first, and let's just go in order. 7 plus 8 equals 15. 7 plus 8 equals 15. 7 and 8 are your add-ins. 15 is your sum. So let's just go ahead and reverse the order of my add-ins for the next fact family. And I'll end up with 8 plus 7 equals 15. Let's go ahead and start our subtraction facts now, just going in the opposite direction. 15 minus 8 equals 7, and let's go ahead and do the inverse operation of the second one. 15 minus 7 equals 8. It's that easy. Take a look here because sometimes kids will get confused about problems like this. And I think the confusion comes because we'll read left to right and they'll see when 7 is subtracted from 12, what's the difference? And people are going to want to try to set it up like this. They think this is saying when 7 is subtracted from 12. No, this is trying to subtract 12 from 7. The main thing you need to know right now when we set up a subtraction problem, at least during this year, your largest number is going to go on top. 12 is the number you are trying to subtract from. 7 
is the number you are subtracting. When you want to go and set up a problem like this, it's going to be 12 minus 7. You have to have the largest number up on top. Take a look here, something kind of new. If the greatest even number in the list below, well, what is the greatest even number? Right now, 264 is even, and 428 is even. What is the greatest even number? 428 is looking like the greatest even number to me. Is added to the smallest odd number. Well, 359 is odd. 157 is odd. So, 157 is my smallest odd number. And they're saying they want us to add the two numbers together, right? So let's take a look and see what's going to be like when we get it all set up. So once again, 428 is our greatest even number. 157 is the smallest odd number. And they want to know what is the sum, the answer when we add. So starting over here in the ones column, 8 plus 7, that is 15. So I'm going to write down my 5. I'm going to carry my 1 into the tens column. 1 plus 2 plus 5, that's going to give us 8. And there is nothing else to carry. Let's move into the hundreds column. 4 plus 1, that is 5. So 585 is your answer. Okay, we keep talking about these guys. Remember, when you're writing a rule that describes, it's all about the how to find. This time they want us to write a rule to describe how to find the number of weeks. Number of weeks is down below. So I'm starting with the number of days and I'm going to the number of weeks, starting with the four and ending up with one. Starting with eight and ending up with two weeks. Starting with 12 days and ending up with three weeks. So what would be the rule that we are using? Looks to me like we are dividing by four, right? Because four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. Twelve divided by four is three. So it's all about figuring out what they're asking you to find. Look for the how to find. So now that we know that the rule was divide by 4, let's take a look here. How many weeks are represented by 36 days? Well, we already found out that the rule was divide by 4, right? So if I have 36 days, I'm just going to go ahead and divide it by 4, right? 36 divided by 4, hey, that's going to give us 9. There would be 9 school days in 36 weeks because we have a 4-day school week here in Dunseith, don't we? Check out this one. Think of two even numbers and add them. Well, my advice is think small. I'm going to go with a 2 and a 4. I know 2 and 4 are both even, right? And then it says, is the sum odd or even? A lot of people are missing that. 6 is even. And then it says, Explain how you found your answer. Explain how I know it's even. Well, I could say I know that the even digits are 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. There's a whole lot of different ways of explaining it, but you do want to make sure you do explain your answer. Check out this one. 
from Emilio's house to school and back again is seven miles. If I go to school and back is seven miles. They want to know how far it is from Emilio's house just to school. So instead of the whole thing, I'm only looking at half the trip, right? Half of seven. Think back to lesson two. How much is half of seven? Well, half of seven, that's going to give us three and a half miles, correct? Because I'm only doing half the trip. So I want to take a look at half of the miles, which is going to be three and a half. So that, my friends, is the end. You're probably going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for this credit quiz. Go slow, go careful, and good luck.